We are so pleased you've joined us today for St. Stephen's Online. We're praying for you as you watch this, wherever you're tuning in from. Lord God, be with us as we worship together and listen to today's talk. resolutions and if you did are you still keeping them I've given up making New Year's resolutions as I'm so bad at keeping them but I feel reassured as only 8% of people keep their New Year's resolutions for a year and most give up before the second Friday in January 
which, fun fact, is officially called Quitters Day. So a huge well done if you are still keeping yours. Today, I want to talk to you about the oldest ever New Year's resolution, God's resolution, for us to love him and to love each other in communities that are inclusive and diverse. After creating all the plants and animals, God resolved to make man in his own image, like him, but different to him. He then decided to make women, someone like a man, but different to him. He resolved to have a relationship with these humans and for them to have a relationship with each other. Despite the ways humans differed to God and were different from each other, it was God's intention that we should embrace our differences and be community with him and with each other. We see this theme of loving, worshipping and thriving in diverse and inclusive communities running all the way through the Old Testament through the story of how God told Abraham that God would, would use his offspring to bless all nations on earth, through the Psalms, the prophets, the way Jesus reached to all people, how he, accept, he accepted both men and women, the rich and the poor, the powerful and the weak, the healthy and those with poor health, the social elite and the social outcasts, the Jews, the Samaritans, and even the Gentiles. The Jewish religion wasn't a religion that sought to make converts out of non-Jews. And as first century Jewish people, Jesus' disciples would have not had many dealings with those who were not Jewish, apart from the dealings with their occupiers, the Romans. So imagine their surprise when just before Jesus went up to heaven, he instructed his disciples to make disciples of all nations. It should come as no surprise then that God chose to use such a diverse mix of people to be key players in the Christmas story. The first key, key character is Mary, a young female. And the first visitors to see the baby Jesus were poor, uneducated shepherds. The next two significant significant characters were righteous, devout and elderly, Simeon and Anna. And the next key characters who Matthew introduces us to are the Magi, the wise men. They were men, they were educated, they were socially elite and probably very wealthy. And not only were they not Jewish, they were from a different country, a different culture, a different language, a different way of life. They were from a completely different world to Mary and Joseph. What a diverse group of people God used for this significant event in history. Young and old, rich and poor, educated and unschooled, Jewish and Gentile. These wise men had to leave their comfort zones. They sacrificed their time, their resources, they left their homes and their loved ones and traveled for hundreds of miles, for perhaps months, probably on camels, through deserts, over mountains, traveling at night in the pitch black with a star in the night sky to, to guide them. It would have probably been an incredibly difficult journey and yet they did it to worship Jesus, a baby boy, under the age of two, from a different culture, a different social class, and a different way of life. So what helped them? What was their inspiration and motivation? They traveled in community, they went together. They had a guide, the star in the sky. They had knowledge. Verse two in Matthew tells us that they told Herod that they were seeking the king of the Jews, and they had been following his star and they had faith. They listened to God. He spoke to them in a dream. They knew it was him and they obeyed. They didn't allow the fear of the unknown to consume them, but stepped out in faith. And was it worth it? Yes. Their lives were made richer by the connection that they had with this baby boy. And what about Mary? 
what must it have been like for her, a young mum with a small baby, to get a visit from these group of regal, regal, important and powerful men suddenly turning up at her door? Men who looked different, who dressed differently, who spoke a different language. She might have been afraid, but she did not allow the fear of the unknown to consume her, but stepped out in faith and welcomed them into her home. And was it worth it? I think that for Mary too, her life became spiritually richer by the connection that she had with these visitors who were so different. Why didn't God choose someone local? Surely there must have been some wise, devout Jewish men who lived in Israel. Why didn't he get a few of them to come and offer the gifts? I think it's because God is using the story of his birth on earth as a man to demonstrate the fact that he came for all, for young, for old, for rich, for poor, for those who are educated and those who are not, for the able-bodied and for those who have disabilities and for all nations, to demonstrate that diversity and inclusivity that is so important and that we are made richer through it. He gave up his majesty in heaven and became poor. And in coming to know him, we can know a richness that money cannot provide. The same richness that the shepherds, Anna and Simeon, and the wise men discovered. You may have felt poor at some times in your life, poor in spirit, poor in health, poor in finances, poor in relationships. You may have felt at times in your life that you have been excluded, that you didn't fit in or belong. The good news is for any of us who have ever felt like this, is that God came down to earth to become something so different. He was born in a place where a baby didn't belong, a place for animals, to a race who was experiencing racial segregation and discrimination, to a family who was poor, to a mum who was pregnant before she was married. He knew what it was like not to belong but he experienced rejection so that we could experience connection. He embraced difference so that we can belong. Mary, Joseph, the shepherds and the wise men were all called to leave what they knew and what they felt they belonged to and to step out into the unfamiliar, to step out of their comfort zones so that they could not only experience God, but they could lead others to experience him also. How is God calling us to step outside our comfort zones so that we can be used by him and in doing so we can meet with him? How can we as a church ensure that everyone feels connected and has a sense of belonging here despite our different backgrounds, cultures and experiences? God has made each of us different. And you are uniquely you. God has amazing plans for you. And he will use everything about you to bring about those plans he has for you. Let us have the confidence and the faith to reach outside of our comfort zones, to connect with others, to pray with others, to welcome and to journey with those who are new or on the edges and to be expectant of how God will enrich us through these relationships. If you'd like to find out more about St Stephen's, please head to our website, follow us on social media or contact the church office.